Welcome to podcast number seven. We're going to study the structure and function of the cell membrane. They got two functions. Number one, they regulate what comes in and what goes out of the cell. And this is really, really important. It allows nutrients and oxygen to get in. It allows waste and whatnot to get out. And it also makes sure that bad stuff doesn't get in and what needs to stay in doesn't get out. Really, really important. Second one is just as important, cellular communication. When you're in a multicellular cell, or I'm sorry, a multicellular organism, you got to have all these cells communicate with each other, and they're going to do that through chemicals. And these chemicals are almost often, they're going to be hormones. Oops, let me go back here. Okay. And so these hormones, which are proteins, will probably bond to like other proteins, and then these proteins will change their shape, and that will signal something to happen on the inside of the cell. All right, so we'll, we'll cover some of that a little bit later. All right, the structure of the cell membrane is known as the lipid mosaic model. And a lipid would be one of your four biomolecules. This would be the one that would be nonpolar. Um, you know, it'd, be, it'd have that sort of triglyceride structure to it. Mosaic refers to made out of many different things. Think of your Roman history, your Byzantine history, when they would make these beautiful mosaics where they took the little colored tiles and they would arrange them into different shapes and now that you would get a picture. In fact, in almost every world history book, when they talk about the Byzantine Empire and Alexander the Great, uh, there's often a, a beautiful Alexander the Great uh, mosaic. I believe it's found in uh, some town in Turkey. I don't quite remember. All right, enough of that stuff. All right, the lipid part. It's a lipid bilayer, bi meaning two. You have two layers of a phospholipid. And now would be a good time as any to draw you a phospholipid. Phospholipids have this general shape. They've got a polar head, and then they'll have two nonpolar tails. All right, so this will be nonpolar tails. Give me a moment just to write this in here. And then obviously the red stuff up here, that's a polar head. And this would be the part where the phosphate would be. In fact, if you want, you can draw a little P in there. That would be fine. All right, so polar head, nonpolar tails. And we'll, we'll come back to this again uh, later in this podcast. All right, the next three items are all proteins. The, next, uh, the first of the three proteins is a transport protein. This will act as a channel. It'll be a door. Remember on the earlier podcast when we talked about the nuclear pores, allow the nuclear pores would act like a door to get stuff in and out of the nucleus? Well, these transport or channel proteins will act the same way. There'll be little doors that allow you to get into the cell membrane and allow some stuff, some stuff to get out. Uh, the third one is a marker protein. Uh, marker proteins are sometimes referred to as a glycoprotein. So we'll add this right in here. Glyco, which refers to a carbohydrate, and obviously protein, which will refer to a protein. All right? So these are going to be proteins that have little carbohydrates on them. And so a uh, great way to draw these, there's the protein, all right? and this would be the phospholipids. Remember, they form a double layer, so the tails will be to the inside. There will be some more over here. Okay, tails, 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 more tails in there. All right, so this green thing here, this is a protein. And we'll color that in a little bit. All right. And, but what it'll have sticking out of it will be these little carbohydrate chains. And these little carbohydrate chains will act as a name tag. Think of like uh, it's written in Braille. And so another cell will feel these, and that will identify what is this cell, what does it do, et cetera. All right, so marker proteins are really, really important. All right, so let's remember, draw that down there. That's your glycoprotein. This will be the protein part, and this will be the glyco part. All right, the third and final uh, protein will be a receptor protein. And let's draw a little picture like this. Okay, let's slide that up. Oops. All right, so here's our little phospholipids again. We'll draw this right in here. Those are the polar heads, polar heads, polar heads, tails to the inside. Okay, we'll put some more over here. There's the tails to the inside. All right. All right. Receptor proteins are going to have a special shape. 
and we'll make him green again like we did in the last one. All right, and let's say we've got a red hormone, and this red hormone will fit right in there. All right, so let's label some of this stuff. Let's go with the yellow. All right, so this green thing right here, that's the receptor protein. be a place where a signal molecule, in this case the red thing right here, we're going to call it a signal molecule, but it can essentially just be a hormone. It's going to bond to this protein, this protein is going to change shape, and that's going to cause something inside the cell to happen. All right, so to review your lipid bilayer, or your lipid mosaic model, two layer of phospholipids, transport proteins, marker proteins, and receptor proteins. All right, if you did not like your my drawings, here are some better ones. All right, I want you to make sure of these. Not on any kind of test, but you can draw and label these pictures. All right, now this is going to keep blinking, so just hopefully it doesn't annoy you too much. All right, so let's, re let's review some of this stuff. Okay, we'll slide this up. Oh, hey, it went bye-bye. All right, here's your glycoprotein. Remember, it says recognition protein right here. But remember, we're going to call it a marker protein. So this is going to be used as an identifier for the cell. Acts as a name tag. And then these carbohydrates are going to be able to tell you what the cell does or what it doesn't. All right, here's your receptor protein. Even though it says it right there, I'll write it for you a little bit better. Receptor protein. And remember, your hormone or signal molecule that thing will bond right in there at the bonding site and then that's going to cause something to happen so all right we'll call this a hormone or signal molecule we'll write hormone this time all right now here's here i didn't draw this on the last one but this is your transport protein sometimes referred to as a channel protein we're going to write channel this time okay and what this will allow is stuff to go in to the cell, and then also stuff can go out of the cell. So it's kind of like a pore, acts like a door. All right, down here we have this very similar thing. Remember, glycoprotein, also known as a marker protein. Get a little bit better. These are your phospholipids, okay? Hydrophobic tails to the middle. Oh, let's go back here. What does hydrophobic mean? Hydrophobic is another name for... Uh, nonpolar and what it means is it hates or it's scared of water the tails or I'm sorry the heads can be called hydrophilic and hydrophilic means loves water because all polar things love water okay. now this transmembrane protein that they have right here this is how you could draw a channel or um, uh, actually a transport protein because remember stuff can go in and stuff can go out all right so over here this is a picture of your phospholipid the phosphate part would be right in here so remember hydrophilic which is polar and hydrophobic which is nonpolar all right so any questions over that All right, we're going to stop right there, and this is where our next podcast will begin. Tune in for the next one, podcast number eight.